All right, so go fucking figure that the day I decide to do a video on microphones that my main microphone, literally, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding when I say this, this thing actually died right after I did that video. Anyway, so what I want to do today is I want to talk a little bit about a board that was fixed while I was off camera. So since it, it, this is not going to be real time, so it's going to be a little boring, but even though it's not real time, I still feel that you can learn something from it. So I want to go over a board that was being a real pain in the ass. And this is a board that had no V-Core, it was an 820-3115, and I want to talk a little bit about why this was. So, let's talk a little bit about V-Core for a moment. So, I've talked about this many, many times, I've talked about the things that can go wrong, that can cause your V-Core circuit to stop working the way it's supposed to. This is a board with a CPU, IMVP, ton resistors looked fine. The U7400 area looked fine. The actual, the, the MOSFETs themselves looked fine. Nothing looked like it was really bad in those areas. So. Let's go back to the overclocking and being a teenager who overclocks his computers kind of thing when you actually have the time to do that type of stuff before you, and let's think about this. How do you set vCore? When you want to overclock your computer, what do you do to set the vCore? You set that in the computer's BIOS. So you do that in the BIOS. Now, how does the BIOS communicate here? So let's just, let's just go over to the CPU vCore circuit for a moment. Alrighty, so U7400. Nah. So we're at U7400 right here, and let's see. So I'm not, we've been over this circuit many, many times. This is a buck converter. If you don't know what a buck converter does, go to any of the other videos where I talk about it. So these, they, you know, this is buck converter number one, buck converter number two, buck converter number three. So it's controlling, again, the high side MOSFET, the low side MOSFET, blah, blah. Now let's see where any kind of communication occurs here that tells it how to set V-Core. So this, this is just a bunch of resistors going to ground for a bunch of random different things. But keep in mind that vCore can actually fluctuate a little bit depending on what the computer is doing. Remember, this is a Core i5 i7 platform. So this, is, since this cannot be adjusted, since it's just the resistor that's set there, that's static. So let's think of uh, something else here. So by static, I mean something that does not change. This is going out, so it can't be that. That's going out, so it can't be that. So it has to be one of these. CPU, IMVP, VR on. Let's take a look where that goes. vCore, VR on, maybe that's something. This, no, it's just a basic signal. So when all system power good is present, it will t say that the CPU vCore can come on. All system power good is not something that ever changes. It's a static signal that gets shot out to say that the system's power is good. Let's see what else can come on here. CPU vids out, vids clock, and vid alert. The CPU vids out, vids clock, and vid alert comes from here, the, those three signals, and let's see where that comes from. So that seems to come directly from U1000, and U1000 is the CPU. So the CPU is what's actually telling that to, to what vCore wants. Now you have to keep in mind here that there are actually several different power rails that power the CPU. So let's take a look over here. Now let's see, so we have a bunch of different things over here. So we have this, PPV, CPU VCCIO, that's an SO rail, and then you also have vCore. So the whole idea here is, see this is at the top, it's above this, that means this turns on before that. So let's th think about this for a second here. So the CPU is going to set CPU vCore. The CPU is actually going to set its vCore, however vCore powers the CPU. This is where you get into one of those little confusing loops where if you don't really understand exactly how the circuit works, you can get yourself really, really confused. So the CPU sets CPU vCore. But the CPU has no vCore, so how is the CPU turning on? It's one of those really confusing things that, again, if you're not really thinking about this, you can very easily get a little trap and a little rabbit hole to hell where you don't know what the hell is the problem. So when you look at this, it makes a lot more sense. CPU, PP, CPU VCCIO, it comes up first before you get actual CPU vCore. And that's going to set the vCore. However, remember about, think about this. When you were a kid and you were overclocking your computer, how did this work? It was in the BIOS area. And the BIOS over here is SPI boot ROM. That's what Apple calls it. So the BIOS, the SPI ROM, communicates with the PCH. And then the PCH communicates with the CPU. So let's think about this for a second. So the CPU is not setting vCore. It's obviously not telling U7400 to actually turn on and do anything. Now, the CPU is not setting its, its vCore. The vCore is going to be set by the BIOS. The BIOS talks to the PCH. If the BIOS is okay, if the BIOS is good, and that BIOS actually is working, and you know, the way you could I guess you could test that is you can try 
uh, saving that dump and then reflashing a new one, obviously uh, keeping in mind ME region issues, with, since this is a Core i5, i7 platform. What you could do is, after that's done, what do you think it is? The PCH is not communicating properly to the CPU. It's not telling the CPU to turn on. It's not telling the CPU, hey, fucker, tell you 7400 what vCore you need so that we can turn the fuck on. The PCH is not doing its job. So I thought here, maybe BIOS issue, maybe SMC issue, or maybe PCH issue. Now, the, the issue here is that the SMC is the area that had the original corrosion, but what you have to think about here is that the SMC on these 3115 boards is right on the other side of it, is the PCH. So if you're thinking SMC issue, then you could also have an issue with the PCH. Now, what I wound up doing here, since I saw that there may have been corrosion that got onto the PCH, is I zoom out it. So I, put a, I shoved a bunch of Amtec 559 all around that chip. I removed the edge bonding of the chip, and then I zoom out it. And after zoom outing it on the ZM-R6200C, it, it turned on, which is great. Didn't see a battery, and had a bunch of sensor issues. So then we replace SMC, and, uh, you know, I always tell you, I want to show you that what we do here actually works. I have to show you because, you know, you probably can't hear me when I tell you that it actually works with this fucking piece of shit microphone that I have. And, and this sucks. I don't want to wait for DPA to fix this. Because that's the thing. It's, it's the Thanksgiving season right now, so I know if I send it, they're not going to uh, get it back to me for a while. Rightfully so. They, have, they probably have lives and families and stuff to do for the holidays better than fix my fucking microphone. But see, passed. Beautiful. And, uh, and that's pretty cool. So, you know, one of the things to really think about here, because a lot of people go on and on about how do I test the components. I want to know how to test the individual components. I want to know how to tell if this little thingy is bad versus that little thingy. Uh, what you think you have to realize is that it's not about testing individual components. Testing individual components can wind up being the biggest fucking waste of time because a lot of the, because that's not what's important. What's important is understanding sequence. What's important is understanding how the circuit actually works so that you can come up with a solution. What's important is actually going through these little things to really try to figure out sequence. What is talking to what? What tells this what to do? Because so often it's, 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 a, little, it's a little trace or it's, it's, just, it's gonna be a little piece of corrosion somewhere that you can't even see that, that's gonna be causing your problem. And it's not just gonna be like you measure every single resistor on the board and you fix it. That's not how this works, but yeah. That's that, and uh, again, I hope you learned something.